tips and tutorials to increase your online presence. Websites, social media, online donations, applications, databases, and more. This is OrgSpring. Hey everyone, this is Craig from OrgSpring, and in this video we are going to discuss some of the settings for WP Rocket, a new and fantastic caching plugin for your WordPress powered websites. I have started using WP Rocket on all of my sites and all of my clients' sites because it is one of the best caching plugins out there, in my opinion, and I have seen dramatic increases in page load time and page speed, along with reliability for the caching uh, in my sites. So, uh, this will be the second tutorial I've done. The first one was a general tutorial. It's a blog post, and I'll post that link up here now. And uh, this one is just a quick tutorial that shows you how to adjust some of the settings. One of the common problems with caching softwares through the minification process is when minifying both your JavaScript and your CSS, it can cause issues on the front end of your site. Some frameworks and some plugins have additional CSS files that it adds or they add to your site uh, in order for that particular plugin to work properly. And when these files are minified um, by your caching plugin, it can cause display issues or even functionality issues. A lot of times it's very typical to see such issues in relation to things like sliders, especially the more advanced sliders. Uh, you could have display problems related to your slider. Uh, another area are events calendars that use JavaScript to display events on uh, actual monthly calendars. And uh, often we find issues related to e-commerce programs as well, which have sometimes complex display functionalities. What we're going to tackle in this video is showing you how to fix caching issues you may run into when you're dealing with using a caching plugin like WP Rocket in particular with WooCommerce. So we'll jump into that right now. So we're here in the store of a website. There's a nonprofit website that we're looking at and they only have one item in their store and we're looking in the archive view here. If there were more items they'd be listed here but you could see we have a nice square thumbnail along with the name of it and then we can select some options and then that will bring us to the individual donation page. Just gonna click that off here and we're looking at the individual donation page which shows the thumbnail image, a little bit larger, but still very much in focus. We have the product information here, a way for you to choose a donation level. And then over here, we have a sidebar. We have the product description below. It's a very nice, easy, usable, neat donation and product page. Now I'm gonna switch over to a page. Uh, and, and what we're using here is we're using caching with certain settings. Now, if we didn't have the correct settings or if we didn't have uh, WooCommerce's CSS, um, removed from the caching, we would have errors. And those errors would look like this. So if we go to the archive page, you'll see here, the thumbnail is much bigger and it's out of focus now because the image is being blown up bigger than it should be. If we look at the single product page, we still have the sidebar, but now the image is huge. It's taking up pretty much 100% of the content column with the information here below, the buttons are little bit bigger, the select box a little bit bigger than it should be. So the CSS of WooCommerce is conflicting um, with this once it's minified. So using the caching program, we've minified the CSS and that's causing problems with WooCommerce's CSS. So we need to find the CSS file that is causing this issue and we need to exclude that from the minification process. So to do this, you're first going to turn off your minification. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove this, go back to our Google Chrome, and we're going to open up Chrome Developer Tools. And you could have a keyword set for that uh, or a key shortcuts that you can use. And we will open up the Developer Tools. And inside the head, typically, is where most of your scripts will be added from plugins. And you can go down this list and you can look for uh, your JavaScript and your CSS. So you'll see we have different things in here that you can be looking for. There are different scripts. There are also different CSS files, style sheets that will load. And you're looking for anything related to WooCommerce. So you'll see here 
We find one here, WooCommerce, so we can make a note of that. There are a few other ones related to layout. You can see here WooCommerce small screen. Here's another one, WooCommerce. These are assets for CSS. These are all the different WooCommerce related CSS files. Now, one of the curious things about WooCommerce is there are so many extensions in the WooCommerce world. So you don't want to exclude just the main WooCommerce files. If you're using certain plugins, like for instance, we are here, where you can see we're using, uh, we have something called Other, which then allows us to put in any donation amount. That's an extension plugin for WooCommerce called Name Your Price. Name Your Price adds its own style sheet as well. You'll see that here. Here's the WooCommerce Name Your Price style sheet specific to that plugin or that extension for WooCommerce. So we might need to exclude that to make this work pr properly. If you have 20 or 30 different extensions installed for WooCommerce, you may need to find all 20 or 30 of those extensions in terms of the CSS or JavaScript files and exclude those. So what we've done is we have created a bunch of these typical ones and we have them saved. You'll see that both with this post and in this video, um, you'll see the links to those. But here's where you would do it. So once you have all these and you copy the full URL to those files, you'll copy them. And then what we'll do is we will go into our WP Rocket settings and in the advanced options area, you will head down to the area that says CSS files to exclude from minification. And we're going to put each one of those on its own line. So once you enter the CSS file in, you enter it here, press enter, you enter the next one. And I have a bunch of those ready to roll, so I'm going to copy those in and you'll be able to see that in just a moment. Now if you have issues where you're putting the CSS files in here and that doesn't clear at all, you can also do JavaScript and exclude JavaScript files, which you could also find uh, in the same way using developer tools. So we have those in here already, and I'll show you what they are. So I have these right here for WooCommerce, and I also have these up here for the Tribe Events Calendar and Events Calendar Pro plugin, because this website happens to use the calendar plugins as well, which which needs this, we'll cover that in a separate tutorial. But these here are the typical WooCommerce files that you'll want to add to your exclusion list for CSS minification. It's the WooCommerce-layout CSS file, the main WooCommerce CSS file, the WooCommerce small screen CSS file, and then in this case we're using name your price extension, so you'll want to add that one as well. Once you put those in here, and then save the file. You'll notice here we have some JavaScript included as well, none related to WooCommerce, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you are using the events calendar, you'll have to put some of those in here. And then you'll just save your changes. And when once the changes are saved, you'll notice that the plugin actually makes these relative paths to your files. And once that's done, you will be able to go back, refresh your page, and your store, archive store, should look perfect, and your single product page should look perfect as well.